Welcome back to another video here at Chris Rock Productions and guys if you haven't already be sure to leave a like on this particular video And you know you guys have been killing it with the subs. So if you're brand new here Don't forget to smash that sub button man. Let's get to this So the reason for today's video is gonna be mainly because I recently had a couple questions when it came to the radio that I have Installed in this car and it dawned upon me to realize that a lot of people don't know how to install a radio from scratch so that's the purpose for today's video. So our Dodge Aspen here has its own particular factory radio, but I still to this day have never been able to grab one to see how it works and or did it not come with the car. So I had to start everything from scratch when it comes down to it. And when you're starting from scratch in particular, you got to understand uh, what are the three things that you pretty much need to have a radio operational. There's only three things and those three things in particular are your ground, your accessory and as well your constant power. Those three things are literally what you need to make a radio work. All the extras, just worry about another time. Just those three. And also to be fair, technically, if you're installing an amplifier as well into your car, the other thing you're gonna need is pretty much the turn on amp uh, wire or a turn on amp. So I'm gonna tell the amplifier, hey, turn on, give it some power and let's roll. And literally to pretty much show you guys that this is all you actually need to have the radio work. Again, just the radio working. All this right now is just a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's factory wiring from this particular manufacturer, which will come in any single radio that you may get aftermarket. But the main wires that we are gonna focus on currently right now, just so you understand what you need, is gonna be right here. Ground, we got our turn on amp because I have an amplifier. We have our, I think the red's the accessory, and then our yellow is our constant power. And that's what you need to make a radio operational. So now look, check this out, your ground, is literally your negative. So your negative goes to any ground part of the car. So anything that's metal. So what did I do in this car in particular? We have the wire coming from the actual radio all the way down within the dash under it. And then we pretty much grounded it to metal part of the car. And that's gonna be this piece right here. So now this is currently our ground. So now that we've established the ground, our next step is to find our constant power. So it's like having your positive basically. So you're gonna ask yourself, what in the car consistently stays on, whether the key is on or whether the key is off? Take a few seconds and think about that real quick. Now instantly you may have automatically thought, well, just go from the battery and that may be a smart thing to do. But then you gotta run a wire all the way from your positive on the battery all the way into the car. So think a little more. You can always tap into the fuse box and you know, here's what we do. And I don't mean tap into the fuse box by going into the fuse box and taking wires out. You can literally get a product that I call, I think it's a fuse tap. It's literally like a micro fuse thing that goes in and you put fuses over it. It has a wire to go. We'll put a link down below or something, man, but you can use one of those. And you have to also think what in the car works while the key is off. Uh, check this out. Well, instantly, if you really think about it, your horn. Your horn is one of the main things in your car that will consistently work no matter whether the key is on or whether the key is off. And then if you want something else to really use, you could even see if you could tap in potentially to your caution lights. Because whether your car is on or off, mind you, no key in there, that's going to always work. So that's your constant power. So let's go into the fuse box with the fuse tap to see what we got. So we're just going to kind of, you know, plop that right out. And we're going to clearly see that for the constant power, we already tapped into the fuse box with this little fuse tap. And clearly the fuse tabs do say use 10 uh, amp fuses. I use whatever the current fuse is for that particular section. So this is 20 amp real quick. I use two 20 amps and it works perfectly fine. But this is for the constant. And clearly if you can see right in here, you guys can see that it literally says horn right in there. So put the fuse tap on and then basically you run the wire from the back of the car or the back of the dash into that particular section and you connect it with the yellow wire and now you have your constant power for your radio and now to complete the circle of life when it comes to a radio to really get a radio operational the last thing that you need is your accessory so now you need to go ahead sit down and ask yourself what in my car will only work when i turn the key think about it just think quick little hint there's a good chance you can literally use the wiring to your ignition system which is a possible way to go about it because you got to turn the key and then it'll Bring the juice to where you need it. Or if you got power windows, uh, I mean, I, I have, you know, 
crank and all that. But if you got power windows, your power windows only work when it comes to having the key turned on. Use the power window fuse. But for me, luckily, I have an accessory fuse and I'll show you guys right now. And right here is where my accessory fuse is. And once again, at the current time when I had the accessory fuse legitimately in there, it was a 20 amp fuse. I got two 20 amps with the fuse tap. And now we have this wire completely connected in the dash all the way to here to the red wire for the radio. And those are the three things that you really need to make a radio operational in a car from scratch. Once again, you got your ground, you got your constant, and you got your accessory. Those three things are pretty much it. So now, how do you even get sound? Chris, you got all these wires here. Isn't some of these wires for the audio, for the speakers? Haha, <laughs> fantastic. Oh my God, you don't know how to do anything. Well, listen here, buddy. Currently I have an amp on the car, so all I need is the RCA cables. But basically, if you really wanted to, you are more than able to connect your speakers from these wires right here. And you can look up any diagram or when you get an aftermarket radio, it'll show you a diagram as to what every single individual color means when it comes to the speakers. So I don't know the colors by heart, but but ideally, these are negative, positive, let's say for the left front speaker. You got the greens, which is a green black, green regular. Again, negative, positive for like the right speaker. Same with the purple, same with the right for the rear and all that stuff. So you can literally go from here and literally connect everything. But maybe you just want to have some better clarity in your audio and you want some loud sound. You want people to really hear what you got going on in your car. So you pretty much get an amplifier. And here's a simple way to how to connect the amplifier. Bear with me though, because you're not going to be able to physically see all the wires, but I'm going to show you exactly where I have them located and where they're going. So typically when you're connecting an amplifier to your car and you want to get some good quality sound in your radio, the main three wires that you kind of going to need when it comes to just connecting the amplifier is going to be your turn on amplifier amp a nice ground and also your positive so here's what we got going on so your turn on amp wire is going to be this white and blue wire that comes factory from the harness of your uh, aftermarket radio so you take this particular wire and you pretty much connect it all the way to a particular spot that says a hey, amplifier i need you to turn on whenever the radio is on basically in the gist of it that's what it means but that wire for me is currently running if i'm not mistaken from here all the way in the back of the dash down i'm pretty sure through this uh, little trim panel all the way down here and then to the back of the car and then we got our positive wire which i have a little connection made up here it goes into the screw that way it has a nice fully secure connection runs to this big fuse which typically comes in a kit of the uh, wire gauges for any kind of speaker it goes all the way in into the firewall and then from that firewall it's going to run down back into this trim panel and then once again follow the whole side of the car until it gets to the rear and now for the last wire to complete at least the power for the amplifier so we're getting juice to the amp it's going to be a ground cable which i pretty much just have i grind it up piece of this metal stuck another uh, connection right on here and then put some dielectric grease and jammed it into the piece of metal and it's it's been working all right so it's clean it has the grease it's not gonna get rust i mean it's working and to pretty much put it in perspective you know here we can once again have our positive cable we got our ground and then here's our turn on amp wire and it's just as simple as that positive turn on amp and then negative now that we've established the power to get to the amplifier now we pretty much need to know where our signal is gonna go for the left speaker, right speaker, just those main connections, which is the RCA cables. And here's where they're at. We got our RCA cables here on the radio. So we have our, you know, left, right as well, left, right. So we got the front, back, or vice versa, front and back. And those cables in particular are gonna go from the radio into the dash. Now, instead of bringing these same cables with the positive and negative cables or at least the positive cable with the turn on amp on this left side you want to make sure that the rcas are completely separate away from that positive cable and the reason behind it is simply because you're going to get a major interference with the rcas and the positive and you're going to get like a weird whining sound and it's going to be the most annoying sound in the world and it's just not going to be a good time so you have to take everything out again and then rewire the stuff so for the rcas again radio through the dash it's going behind the dash onto that trim panel, and then on the whole right side of the car all the way to the amp. And here in the back of the car, we have our RCAs. So basically we have our signal saying, hey, go from the radio to the amp, okay? That's what I want you to do. We have our left side, our right side, go to our amp. And now the final piece to gather everything together is just connecting your negative and your positive wires for your speakers. I'm not gonna be able to see much because I can't really dig in there, but if I zoom in, 
pretty much all that wiring right there. You know, literally, let's, if we start from this left side, I'm pretty sure we have a negative positive going into one of the speakers up top. Same thing, negative positive, and on the bottom, negative positive, negative positive, and they all correlate to every speaker that we have going on right here up top. So I have, you know, some six by nines and then some three inch speakers. And once again, just negative positive, negative positive, negative positive, and the same thing over there, negative positive. And that is pretty much it. And that's all it pretty much takes. That's what, to me, it takes to really get a radio going. So to complete this whole video, I'm just gonna show you guys that well, everything's kind of disassembled, you know? I don't have anything hiding in the background to make it funny or edit something. Let me just show you how this works. Once again, here's a radio, no key. Everything is still in the same exact spot, bro. Same exact, nothing funny here, nothing crazy. We have in the same spot. Probably shouldn't be pulling on that, but that's fine. Now, key on or key in, turn key, right? Annoying beeping, radio, look at that. Look at that beauty, dog. Are you kidding me? That's gonna stay on for a little, oh, maybe not. Boom. Right now it's about to connect to the Bluetooth real quickly, so we're gonna give this a little bit of time. And a little bit of moment of truth. Again, this really should not be hanging the way it is, but we're gonna hit play over here. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up, guys. It's that easy. I can't make it up. Let's go. And that is legitimately how, at least, I'm not saying it's how you do it. It's how Chris Rod installs the radio and how he does his stuff, or he does what he does, man. You know, it's just how that is. Now, there is one consideration that I want you guys to take in for a little bit, just one. And that main consideration is that when it comes to these new cars, like if you had a 2024 car and you're trying to do a radio, the mini taps, it's not gonna really work out, I don't think, and that's mainly because you have a whole lot of sensors and new stuff and technology and all kinds of crazy nonsense, man. So it's like ridiculous, but I think that may interfere. But I'm pretty sure if you got something from like 2010 and under and even like maybe 2014 and under or younger, older, older, you should be fine, bro, you should be fine. And there you guys have it. It is pretty much that easy and that simple to be able to put a whole system in your car or at least do the whole wiring from scratch and not have to worry about anything. I mean. 40 year car, wires, it could burn up, we're good. But that's how you do it. Something I need to make sure I mention to you, you are never, and I repeat, you're never gonna get the best clarity and the best sound from just installing a radio system in your car. Understand that there's still a whole lot of more fine tuning. Now, my suggestion to learn how you can kind of fine tune your car, I would suggest to look at certain videos that state how to set the equalizer and so forth and how to really get all that settings dialed in. And after you confuse yourself multiple times, come back to this video, leave a comment, and see if you actually want me to do what I do. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah. And with all that being said, if you guys found this video enjoyable and or helpful in any kind of way, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget for your boy, be sure to join the click by simply smashing the subscribe button and as well as ring the notification bell. Until this my boy Chris Ryan, I see all you beautiful people next one. Peace.